my mother is quite happy that I have finished my exams. Yeah. If this is even before the results come out, like a few months later. Yeah. My mother is happy that I finished my exams yeah. on Thursday. On Monday, mm. she introduces me to a hotel called Tropical African Dream mm-hmm. in Malindi, mm-hmm. where I go and become a management trainee. Oh. Okay, that's a fancy word. An intern, a you trainee. become an uh, an intern. Yeah. And a KYM in other KYM. words. KYM. What we call the, the, Kadayam Wakos. Yes. You, you, <laughs> you start in and you, you basically are people yeah. in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> and what was happening there is that uh, I started in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tropical Hotel is in Kilifi. It's in Malindi. Still. Malindi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's mm. not far from my house, mm-hmm. actually. Mm. Um, and because she herself used to be uh, a senior employee there, mm-hmm. Um, it was contrived in such a way that nobody knew who I was. Ah. Nobody knew my relationship to her. Okay. At all. Apart mm. from, I think, maybe some of the senior managers mm. who didn't know who I mm. was. Mm. May I go into the kitchen? Mm. I used to walk to the place. Mm. We don't know that very, very terrible suit that the chefs must wear. The white one. The white one mm-hmm. with the coffee as well. Mm-hmm. Malindi is hot. Right. Now try and imagine yourself wearing this woolen thing. The whole day, the whole time you're there. The whole time. Mm. It was ridiculous. Terrible. But, uh, and it was high pressure because we go, we go in at uh, 5.45. And in the AM. In the AM. Mm. And first we serve breakfast. So yeah. we find breakfast has already kind of been ready. Prepared, yeah. And we're the ones, you know the guys when you go to these hotels, they're the ones who are... Yeah putting stuff in your plate yeah so we become those guys mm-hmm. and then we go back and start preparing for lunch mm. now because we're trainees mm. you're being taught how to dice and cut and whatever it is now my friend um the toxic environment that was it's, yeah. if you were dicing a car if you're slicing a carrot mm-hmm. you needed to make sure that every slice is exactly the same width oh. but you have to do it quickly because nobody has nobody has time you have to do this Mm-hmm. But you must make sure that they're each the same size. How do you do that? It's a, it's a practice thing. Yeah. But in that period of practice, you're going to be insulted. Your mother will be insulted. Oh. Your entire lineage will be insulted for how dare you cut this carrot badly. But the carrots are not even the same size. One, one end is smaller you, than the other. There is an art to culinary uh, things. There's an art to... The, the anybody, cold kitchen. Anybody that you see, anybody yeah. you see um, in a chef's uniform, please give them a lot of respect because they were trained under really hard circumstances. All right. Um, because they had, for, the, for the carrots on the plate, for the broccoli to look just so, yeah. it has become just so in a really short amount of time. And names have been called. Names have been Bad called. Names. <laughs> names have... Uh, listen, your entire clan... <laughs> <laughs> has, has, has been, been put cursed. on the lifeline <laughs> <laughs> has been cursed by your entire oh dear. you know it was it was quite high pressure yeah um but so and and mark that point that mm. you know it, it was high pressure and because it was high pressure a lot of guys quit in the midway okay it was almost designed like a boot camp mm. um for guys to quit mm. so that only the guys who were the toughest mm. would stay this is now 99. This is 99 mm. now. Mm. This is actually December of 98. 98. Okay, immediately after high yeah. school the, and the year yeah. after. Right. So this is actually that capital. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't know that I can remember how my story goes chronologically. Since it's all right. But, you know, let's see. Mm. Um, but so we, I go into the, into the kitchen mm-hmm. and we have to cut this, you know, my things. Mm. Um, and I learned how to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like it very much. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the hours. I didn't like the fact that it, mm. I was standing in this woolen suit. For... I didn't like the fact that it was hot all the time. Mm. Um, I didn't like the fact that uh, we were being insulted. There, were a lot, there was a lot of name calling. I mean, the, the circumstances the were circumstances, hideous. Uh, well, yeah. no, uh, and, you, you know, kudos. There was some guys that I was with then yeah. who loved it. Yeah. I didn't like it. Okay. But I stuck it out. Yeah. I just hunkered down yeah and eventually i became pretty good because okay. i was not getting any insults at one point because uh-huh. and people were being told look at what this one is doing oh. there was no names eh? you, okay. are, you are not a name you are this one oh. <laughs> you know sort of thing emulate this one mm. so, <laughs> mm. and so we would do it mm-hmm. and then one month later i was moved to the restaurant mm. as a waiter mm-hmm. ah, there i loved it mm. so, you know 
walking up and down. We had to come in the morning, serve um, breakfast, mm. then um, prepare for lunch, mm -hmm. meaning that if lunch was going to be by the poolside, mm. you have to carry these heavy tables all the way to the poolside, mm. then you have to lay them. Now, laying a table in a five-star hotel is, an, is, also nice. is a thing mm -hmm. because you have one, two, three, four plates. Mm -hmm. You have four glasses. Mm -hmm. You have six, you have three forks, three knives, um, a, knife, a, a, a dessert knife and a dessert spoon um, and a soup spoon on this side. And you have water glass all of which two must wine be glasses, placed all of which must be placed in just particular so. yeah um if you google um mm. a place setting you'll see how it is mm. um you have to set it just so and then mm. once you've done all that yeah. for your 10 tables or yeah. 15 tables yeah you then have to take the napkins and today you've been told the art is a swan whoa so you must fold the napkins into a swan or fold the napkins into a ship. Every or day, fold something the napkins different. Into a fish, or whatever yeah. it is they tell you to do. Yeah. Um, also, amidst a lot of insults and a lot of pressure, oh. then it was time to serve. Um, and here, my language helps because I speak English. Um, a lot of the guests are mzungus, yeah. uh, especially from England. Yeah. And they enjoy the fact that I can speak um, good, fluent well. English. Yeah. They want to know uh, how do you speak so well. Yeah. Did, you know, did you grow up here? I said, yeah. yes, I grew up here. Yeah. So how do you speak so well? Yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I listen to you guys a lot. <laughs> tip comes yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. of the first. Yeah. So I was making a lot of money in tips yeah. Yeah. Um, because of that. Yeah. Um, and of course, my family is that that has, has all through my life been shuttling back and forth. From Between Nairobi uh, and Europe and... And, and, oh, and know, as well. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's all of that. Mm. Um, so I finish, uh, I, I work in the, in the, in the, in the restaurant mm -hmm. and then immediately after that I move to the housekeeping. Okay. Department. Same, same place. And you're given 10 rooms. Oof. Um, and, uh, what you're supposed to do is come here at 7am. Mm -hmm. You go into a room. Mm. Uh, the guest has gone for breakfast. Mm. You go into a room scrub the bathroom mm -hmm. which is disgusting oh, because man. people are not very clean yeah many people um scrub the bathroom clean the toilet change the towels and so on and so forth come into the bedroom wash the entire bedroom mm. um make the bed mm. into an art mm. okay so the way that you fold the bed again is an art mm. um, is an art thing not just the way we make beds at home yeah it has to be nice yeah um, and at a five star and it has to be done a certain yeah. way. And then now you have 10 rooms. Mm. You must be finished by three when the guest is going to take their nap. It's So just for me to learn, it is standard that it's 10 rooms per, per person. person. Right. It is, a it is a general global standard. Okay. Sometimes you're given 12. Oh man. No wonder then that at 5 p.m. at times you're going back as a guest and you're still finding that it's still not done. Yes. But majority of times, mm. if, you have, if the guys are good, mm. If you come back at two, you they should all be done. Yes, and therefore it's a requ and, and hence why then we ask you know like by ten please have checked out so that they can start early. Um, so you check out. Yeah. So first you do the rooms where the people are there. Then if there are any checkout rooms, you make sure you do them in the morning. Yeah. So that by noon, yeah, you guys can check in. Th that's correct. And a check-in room is diff is clean differently from a uh, people you know from a booked room. A booked room where there's somebody already staying in there. Yeah. You may not have to change the the towels every day because yeah. they are still using that. Yeah. Or so and so forth. Yeah. But the wardrobes are not going to be interfered yeah. with. I mean, there's there's a lot there, of there's things. spaces that yeah. are already private for yeah. those guys. Yeah. But a checked in a room for check-in. Yeah. Has to be done as if it's it has fresh. never been, been slept in before. Yeah. So you're changing all the sheets, all the towels, yeah. all the everything. Yeah. In that hotel, even the glasses were. You know the glasses where you put in your mm. your um, toothpaste, and toothpaste and yeah. whatnot had to be taken away, Oof. and you put another one. Yeah, uh, um, just to make sure that it's it's that's, new. That's that incredible. was the standard. Mm. Mm. It's mm. I think it's still the, the hotel yeah. is now called Sandys. I'm happy to give them a shout out even it, now. Yeah, their standard is still mm. um, pretty high. Mm. Um, 
so we I learned how to do all of that. Mm. Um, I, I go into that level of detail to mm. say this is the level mm. at which I learned. Mm. And I remember this period because of the fact that there was a lot that the kitchen, the uh, working in the um, in the restaurant and in housekeeping, mm. and later on in laundry. You did laundry as well. Yes, oh, I went to laundry as well, oh. where you you, oh. <laughs> you you learn how to fold, right? And you, I remember you know being told when you're cleaning a room, mm. you know nobody ever thinks about cleaning the underside of the table. That's correct. Or the underside of the sink. Yeah. If at all if i mean even in, in most even homes. in our homes yeah. we don't clean the yeah. other side of these places yeah. they're the filthiest i can imagine in hotels so we are told those are priority. that is that is where they check yeah they don't check where your eyes see mm. so to this day it has it has stuck stuck that there's a certain level of manual work that you must do yeah if you're going to be a ceo yeah and that manual work goes a long way. And I've spoken to a lot of my friends yeah. who have told me that it was because of the way they had to do the manual work perfectly. Back then. But yeah. Back then. Yeah, yeah. Paying, doing, paying the price. Yeah. The cost has got to be paid on the, on the mundane. Yes. Yeah. So I tell the university students now, I'm happy that you graduated. Yeah. I'm really happy that you graduated. Right. Now, while you're waiting to find a job, yeah. please go and clean a floor. Yeah get a job and volunteer in a restaurant yeah even if they're not paying you mm. but be the person who sweeps that floor the best mm. go to a car wash and mm. learn how to wash a car mm. and wash it better than everybody else mm. learn how to detail a car mm. Mm. those lessons mm. you're going they are going to be useful for when you're a ceo when you are handling the detail the exactly. level of detail that you require to handle as an executive as a ceo yes. you you need you to need, remember you the, need that level yeah. of the bad side view and the warm side view. Yes. You know? So you the warm side yes. view at times will only come when, when you know, wait a minute, I, I, I remember that level of detail. And the warm side view is not clean. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's dirty. You go it's to, dirty. You so go to get your hands dirty. Getting your hands dirty. dirty yeah. That's something that guys don't. Oh, that's so perfect. You know, it's Thank something you that for we sharing push. That. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we go through that. Mm. Um, and by the time I get out of laundry, I go to reception. And I used to have to pick up the phone all the time. Tropical African Dream, may I help you? Mm. Um, and I eventually I realized hotel life is not for me. Okay. After now, how many years? Uh, how, after, how... Uh, close to a year. Okay. Now, my mother is a hotelier. Mm. My grandmother had a big career in hospitality mm. industry. Mm. Um, several other members of my family were I... in the hospitality industry. Yeah, yeah. So the, the assumption was that you're going to take the path. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. And here I am saying I'm not going to the hotel industry. Uh. So my mother then says that um, you should go to Italy. Mm. We'll find your university there. Mm. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's other kids who are going to Italy. Mm. And they're they are making do. You know, they do the dishwashing and mm. they do the slow-end jobs while mm -hmm. they're in uni. And then eventually they find maybe nicer Different. jobs, yeah. whatever it is. Mm. But you'll, the bottom line is you will make money. Mm. That somehow refused to, to click connect with that you. I'm just going to do to emigrate just because of money. Mm. It was refusing. Mm. And then at that time, remember I had been reading a lot. I was always yeah. reading. Yeah. One of the things that I had noticed is that President Daniel Moy was coming to the end of his term. Mm. So this is around early two, these this are almost the 2000 yeah, period. 99 going into 2000. Mm. Um, and so I'm telling my mother, listen, I don't think this is the time to leave Kenya. In fact, I think this is the time to double down on Kenya. Mm. This is the time to invest in Kenya. She's like, no. Can you see <laughs> how the economy is? Because by the time he was leaving, oh, uh, it surely was, the economy it was, was <laughs> gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she was like, look at this economy. And I'm like, yeah, it's because of this economy mm. that I think this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, our minds did not meet. Of course, at that time, that argument <laughs> is looking <laughs> and, like and, it's, it's... Exactly. It's, uh, and plus, I am more experienced than you. Exactly. The, the, what really, are you saying? This yeah. is not, mm. you know, mm. wait until you have experience and you can mm. come and tell us this. Mm. Thing. Now I'm here, I'm saying, mm. I think we should double down in Kenya mm. and she says mm. both my parents are saying no mm. you know there's nothing happening in mm. Kenya mm. by this time mm. things like uh, Kayabombo mm. 
um, riots have happened in in Kwale. Mm. Hotels are already starting to falter. Yeah. They're like, look, tourism is going down the drain. Mm. Um, you can see the economy is going down. Yeah. The drain. You cannot stay here. Mm. So in 2000, January 6th, I moved to Nairobi. 